This is the final video in the chapter, and this video is exploring the relationship between inequalities and their graphical representations, uh, which has been alluded to slightly already in the quadratic inequalities video. So let's start with two non-parallel linear inequalities, and we want to define straight off the bat two linear functions. Let's define a linear function as fx, so fx is going to be equal to ax plus b, let's say, and let's define another linear um, function, let's say that g of x is equal to, let's say, cx plus d. Okay, let's represent um, these linear functions graphically. Let's say that uh, f of x, remember it's going to be, uh, is linear, so it's going to be a straight line, so let's say f of x is like this, and let's say that g of x uh, is like this. Okay, so firstly, the point of intersection, this is when f of x is equal to g of x, and this has pretty much been defined quite well in the simultaneous equation chapter. This, uh, the point of intersection, is equal um, to the solutions of when f of x is equal to g of x. So remember that the point of intersection is remember equal to the solutions. Uh, there is another way of saying this if you want to. You could say that it is the solution to the simultaneous equations y is equal to f of x and y is equal to g of x. Okay, so that is the point of intersection defined and we're just going to call this um, E, F, this point. We're not going to, we're going to use E, F because we've already used A, B, C and D um, in the uh, functions up here. Okay, let's define when f of x is greater than g of x and it is going to be these when these set of values here so we'll call this 2 and 2 is when f of x is greater than g of x. Hopefully you can see why this is because this is when the line f of x here is greater than g of x. So f of x is going to be um, greater than g of x as the fx line is on top of the gx line. And the x values down here represent the set of values for when f of x is greater than g of x. So this is the really good thing about graphical representations. As you can see, using the point of intersection, because remember the point of intersection is when it's going to be f of x is equal to g of x, you can see the set of values for when f of x is going to be greater than g of x. You can see the set of values and you can see the point in which it is no longer going to be the case. So hopefully you can see that we can define the set of values for when f of x is greater than g of x is when x is less than e. Remember e is here in the point of intersection and the uh, set of values is represented by x. So it's at this point here, which is e, this is the point where f of x is no longer greater than g of x because it is a point of intersection. Um, it's when they um, it's when they uh, both equal to zero. So no longer f of x is equal to g of x at this point. Uh, we could write this as set notation as well if we wanted to. So open bracket, x is a solution when x is less than e, and then close bracket. Let's define this area here then. This is when f of x is less than g of x. So you can hopefully see this because f of x is going to be less than g of x here because the gx line is above the fx line. Hopefully you can see that um, quite easily and so why that is. And the x values down here 
the x values down here will represent the set of values for when uh, f of x is less than g of x. So again, using the point of intersection, we can show that the set of values is going to be when x is greater than e. Because remember, this is uh, this point here is when it's equal to... Um, uh, this is when they're equal to each other. So everything after this point is when g of x is above f of x. So therefore, um, when x is above e, g of x is going to be greater than f of x. Uh, we can also write this in set notation um, if we want to and say that x is a solution when x is greater than e. And this is basically the point of this section of the video, to nail home this um, this kind of point. As the spec specifically states um, this uh, kind of theory, is you need to understand what inequalities represent graphically. So for example, they may give you a graph like this here. They may give you a graph like this and a point of intersection, and they may ask you to find inequalities using it, like um, I've done here. Um, you need to under you, this is quite a, a useful method because it's quite easy to read the graph. If you understand what the lines represent and you understand that the y values represent when the functions are bigger than each other and understand that the x values down here the x values down here represent the set of values for when this is true, for when um, the inequalities are true. And using the point of intersection you can solve these questions easily. Okay, let's consider another example to illustrate this point. Now let's consider one quadratic and one linear function and they have two points of intersection. So let's consider a quadratic function which we'll define as fx and then it's going to be in the form as it's quadratic ax squared plus bx plus c and then let's consider uh, a linear function g of x which is obviously going to be in the form dx plus e. And let's represent this uh, graphically, so we need a pair of axes. And then let's draw the uh, quadratic uh, function. Let's do it uh, like this. This is f of x. And let's draw the linear function g of x like this. Remember that we said that there would be two points of intersection. Okay, let's say that the x-coordinates for the points of intersection, remember that the points of intersections are going to be the solutions for when um, f of x is equal to g of x. So let's say that the x-coordinates for the points of intersection, this one here is f and this one here is g, let's say. And let's say a question wants us to find the set of values for when a f of x, and remember we can write f of x as ax squared plus bx plus c if we want to is bigger than g of x. I remember we can write g of x as dx plus e. So these two, um, these two here are the same thing. And for part b, let's find the set of values for when f of x is less than g of x. Okay, so let's do a first. So we need to find the values where f of x is greater than g of x. Okay, we need to find uh, the values when the f of x line is above the g of x line. And then what's really good about um, if they provide you with a graph like this is that it's very easy to see when these values exist is these values exist here and here. Uh, remember, if you, I know it doesn't really represent it on the graph, but if you expand the quadratic, it will always uh, be above the um, the uh, the other um, linear function. 
So we can define these two uh, points as that f of x is greater than g of x when x is less than f or when x is greater than g. And we can write this in set notation if we want to, so open bracket, x is a solution when x is less than f, close bracket, and then or with the uh, kind of u looking sign, x is a solution when x is more than g. So this is a really good, um, this is really good if they provide you with a graph like this, because instead of actually having to solve the um, the uh, inequalities, you can actually just look at the graph and figure it out graphically for when f of x is greater than g of x, rather than having to go through the whole thing of um, solving the um, inequality. It's a quick method if they provide you with the um, with the graph. And for part b, where we need to find where f of x is less than g of x, we can see that the only points in which the g of x line is above the f x line is this. Uh, region here. And we can define this region as when x is bigger than f but is less than g. And we can define this in set notation as open bracket x is a solution when x is bigger than f but less than g. And this is what is really useful again about the graphical method as it um, if they provide you with a graph, you can quickly figure out inequalities. So this was the part. This was um, the point of this uh, section of the videos because it mentions it in the spec. You need to graphically understand what it means when it gives you inequalities like this. Graphically, what is it actually saying in terms of what it means? Is if you draw these functions on the graph, what does it actually represent? The final part of this video is on regions. So regions are a surprisingly common exam question in the new specification. They ask them quite a lot. Um, I think it's probably because it th they kind of think that it kind of requires a combination of skills. So they kind of throw the um, the questions in. Um, so what they'll do is they'll give you some inequalities and they want you to represent them graphically and find a region in which, for which all of them uh, exist at the same time. So the way you do this is you need to rearrange all the inequalities uh, you get to make y the subject unless it's um, something uh, where y is not present, it's only x, like, uh, I don't know, like x is um, bigger than 2 or something like that. And then you replace the inequality signs with equal signs and that helps you draw the lines. Um, so you're going to have to do this accurately, so if they ask you this question uh, in the exam, they're going to provide you with graph paper or a uh, coordinate grid or something like that. Um, a really quick note, there are two types of lines that you need to draw. You need to draw these dotted types of lines. These represent when it is uh, these inequality signs, less than or greater to or greater than and the important thing here is that it's meant to represent that it is not including the line it is not including the values that are on the line the kind of dotted line whereas if it's a solid line like this this represents these inequality signs when it's greater than or equal to or less than or equal to and what the solid line represents is that it also includes the values that is on the line as well as that it's equal to as well. Okay, so let's do a question. Uh, so let's say it uh, says shade the region uh, contained by x is bigger than 1, y is greater than 1 and y plus 2x minus 6 is less than or equal to 0. So in order to do this we need to rearrange all the uh, inequalities to make y the subject. Uh, for this one we can't do because y isn't present so we just leave it as it is. For this one it's already um, in that form. Uh, for this one down here uh, we just need to move the 2x and the minus 6 on the other side to get y is less than 
or uh, equal to minus 2x plus 6. Um, so it's quite hard for me to do this um, accurately, so I'm just going to kind of sketch it kind of briefly. I hope that's okay. Um, because doing this on a drawing tablet on a uh, Microsoft whiteboard is practically impossible to draw it accurately. But in order to do this, so first of all, you're going to sketch um, all the lines. So you replace all of the inequality signs with equal signs. So x is equal to 1, y is equal to 1, and y is equal to minus 2x plus 6. So for the x is equal to uh, 1, remember that we don't have an equal sign here, so we do the dotted line. Yes. And then x has to be uh, greater than 1, so what you'll find is this line will look like this here. This is all the values when x is greater than 1. Then we need to do y uh, is equal to 1. Now remember we don't need to, um, we're going to do the dotted line again because there is, uh, it's not equal to, so we're going to do the dotted line again because of the inequality sign. And this will look like this. And then for the final one, y is equal to minus 2x plus 6. We're going to make this a solid line because we have got the equal than uh, inequality symbol, so we need to do a solid line. So y is equal to minus 2x plus 6 is going to sort of look like this, the line. It's going to um, sort of um, kind of look uh, in this style. Sorry, I can't draw it accurately, but it's it's really hard to do um, with a drawing tablet, etc. Um, so now we need to look at the inequalities. So we need to find the values when x is greater than 1. So when x is greater than 1, so we need to find all the values that are on this side of the line. We need to find all the values for when y is greater than 1. So we need to find all the values where y is greater than 1, therefore it's on this side of the uh, of the line and we need to find all the values where y is less than or equal to minus 2x plus 6 so y is less than so we need to find all the values that are below the line here and if you do that you will find this little region here and this is the region that you need to shade this small little region, this small little uh, triangle um, here. Um, really quick as well, especially in exams, um, this is a perfectly acceptable way to um, shade. I know a lot of people, if I just kind of draw the triangle down here, I know a lot of people try and like um, shade every single bit. It's a waste of time, you don't need to. Um, you can, I mean, if, if you really want to, but it, it's such a waste of time, you might as well just do it sort of in the cross grid form like that, that is an acceptable way of shading, they'll completely um, accept that um, as the answer. Um, really quick, I've seen a couple of questions in the book are talking about finding the area of um, the shaded region. I don't think I've ever seen the exam question asked that, but just in case it does come up, um, the best tip is if it's not an easy shape, so it's not a triangle, or it's not a square or anything like that, the best thing to do is to split it up into smaller shapes. Um, and then solve them individually. That's the best way to approach it. Um, so do some of the region questions in the book, in my opinion. I'm not going to include any on here because plotting an accurate graph obviously has to do it accurately for regions. Um, plotting an accurate graph here and actually sketching it accurately and kind of plotting points uh, is going to be basically impossible on a drawing tablet. It'll be painful for all of us. Um, so just try and do uh, some questions in the book. Okay, so this is the end of uh, the videos in this chapter. Um, finally, the next chapter uh, starts content that is actually new to A-level and is not in the GCSE spec.